Normally, when we run a program or view a web page, we want it to run as fast as possible. But when we're programming, we want to be able to stop it right on a line of code so we can see what's happening. In this video, I'll show you how to use the tools that come with Google Chrome so you can stop your program right where you want to. First, I'll give you a quick code walkthrough. Here's the page we're looking at. So here's what the page looks at and here's our code and if you scroll down you can see around line 11 we go into the head and the the items that are in the head are stored in temporary memory when the browser first loads down here on line 16 you can see where we turn the script on so we're telling the browser to start thinking as JavaScript and then we do a block of code with the name display hello and anytime we call display hello then the code inside these two curly braces is going to run then we turn off our script tag we turn on the style tag which tells the browser well now let's store all our styles so we stored three styles one is for the body element one is for the h1 element and one is for the paragraph element so whenever these show up on the web page, the browser is automatically going to go into short-term memory, look at these settings, these rules, and it's going to style those elements based on these rules. Here's the end of our style. Here's the end of our head. So now the browser has all the temporary things it needs to do what we want it to do to the web page, basically the functions and the styles. Then we tell the browser, let's go to work, and we open up the body, we do a, a main head, we do a subhead with an H2, a, just a simple paragraph, and then we turn JavaScript back on, so we tell the browser, okay, now that you've displayed that stuff, put on your JavaScript hat, and we do a basic JavaScript statement that's document write, so we basically write out this statement to the screen. Then we call that function that we saved earlier when we first loaded the page. We call display hello, and that runs all that code in temporary memory. We turn off our script tag. We turn off our paragraph. We tell the browser this is the end of our body, the end of our HTML, and the page is all done. So now let's take a look at this in action using the Google tools. So we're going to go to the web page and we can do view developer developer tools you can also go over here to the wrench and do the same thing I was gonna go off my screen a little bit but I hit the wrench I'm gonna to go to tools and developer tools so there's like three different ways that you can look at these tools when you first open up the tools, it's, it's going to split the screen, and you can change how much of this display takes up by moving that top margin up and down. You can also change how much happens over here, too. And so I'm going to kind of do it in thirds. And you can see the code right here and our web page. Now, in order for the debugging tools to work, you have to make sure there's no errors on your page. So we're going to click on the console tab. We're going to do a refresh with a control R. And we're going to run our page. And we can see that there's no errors. Now, I could incorporate an error and show you how that works, but you'll get plenty of practice. Just make sure you use your console tab first. Make sure it's empty before you go in it and do any debugging. The debugging tools won't work until your scripts are error-free. Well, it looks like we're error-free, so let's go into our script tab. And we're going to scroll down to the body of our page. And on this line numbers, this is called the gutter, we're going to click on the document right line 80 and that's going to set a stop point. We call this a breakpoint. And if you look over here on the right, you can see the breakpoints are listed. So here's our line 80 being listed here. Use Control-R to refresh the page. 
and the page is going to run right to that breakpoint. So you can see here that it stopped on the breakpoint. Now, to be effective with your debugging, you need to ask yourself each time you step what's going to happen next. So we look here, and when we run this line, we're going to say, what's going to happen next? Well, this is going to output to the screen, and it's going to display, this is being displayed from the body section with two line returns. Here's our control panel right here. Now, this arrow or this triangle pointing to the right just means just run the script, just go from wherever you are to the end. This says just take one step. We can also take a step into a function and just do a, like a little baby step. And if we happen to get into a function that we that's too deep and that we don't want to we don't need to look at, then we can step out of it with this out arrow. The one you're going to use the most, however, is this step over or F10. And when you get when you find out what you need, then you can just click on, on the run button or F8. So I'm going to click on the step next. And I should see this phrase be displayed on the screen. And there, there it happened. Now, what's going to happen next? Well, it's going to jump to our temporary memory, and it's going to start displaying the code in the function display hello. So let's do that. We'll click on the next. and it ran right through the page. So let me try that again. Control R, do my document right, and now this should go into our function. Oh, but that's going to step over our function. We want to step into the function. So let's use our F11 or our step into. And now you can see that it went up, it found our function, and it went into the first line. So what's this line going to do? Well, it's going to output hello JavaScript. So let's do a step over. And there it printed out for us. Now what's going to happen? Well, it's going to take this empty space and it's going to attach it to a new variable, this name. So we're making a new variable and we're putting empty space in it. So let's step over. And you can see that now we have a variable over here called this name with nothing in it. Step over. What's going to happen next? The prompt is going to ask the user for information, and it's going to give a default or a suggestion of Jennifer JavaScript. It's then going to take that and put it in our new variable. So we'll see whatever the user typed in in our new variable. Also, watch this. As I mouse over this name, it shows me the contents. So I don't have to look over here. I can just say this name, mouse over, Pause the mouse and you'll see the contents. So let's do a step over. There's our pop-up. We're just going to say OK. Now watch, I'm going to mouse over this name. And you can see the contents is now Jennifer JavaScript. This next line is going to do a pop-up. And it's going to display whatever is in that variable plus the string you are in the display hello. I'll step over. There's our pop-up with Jennifer JavaScript. And then we're going to write out Jennifer JavaScript. You are in display. Now, this was a pop-up. The alert is a pop-up. The document write, or write line, is going to put it to the screen. So I'll do a step, and here you can see it output. So do you see the difference between an alert and a document write, a document write line? Now, what's going to happen next? Well, the program's going to go back to where it was when we called this function name. So here we call the function name, and then the page is going to end. So I'm just going to step and watch the page end. That's the end of our page. And you can see that you're done with the page because these controls are no longer valid. They've been grayed out. So that's the basic introduction to using the breakpoints that come with the Chrome developer. 
Remember, always check your console tab first. Make sure you have no syntax errors. And once you have this screen cleared, then you can click on the script tag and set your breakpoints. As you set your breakpoints, always ask yourself, what's going to happen next? Answer yourself and then do the step and see if the computer agrees which, with what you thought was going to happen. One little side note here is you can turn on the console by clicking on this icon down here in the border and that will turn your console on and off. So you can either do it down here or you can use the tab up here. Use your JavaScript debugging tools often. They're very useful and they'll help you understand your code and find things that are going wrong.